angry looking, you know, like it was one of those like meaty, beefy spiders that looks like a pit bull of a spider. And it's just like, mm, you want to go, bitch? And knowing that that thing was like living in the store, like I could have like reached under there for like some receipt paper. And that little fucker was like, mm, what are you doing in my home? <laughs> well, hello, chaps. Wolfgore here. And welcome back to another Let's Talk. I think that's what I'm calling it. Let's Talk. I don't know if that's going to stick or whatever, but that's what we're calling it for right now. So, um, let's just talk. So, fucking crazy awesome shit happening lately. Um, so I've been doing a lot more streaming. I've been focusing more on that than on recording and doing uploads, which I've been doing for, like, over a year now. I'm not really getting anywhere on YouTube, not getting any kind of traction. I mean, some appreciation, you know, a few friends and viewers watching, but nothing has really been happening with that for a year now. And that's fine. I knew I had to pay my dues and everything. But I've been streaming lately, and oh my god, this past week of streaming has been next level. Like, uh, a week ago, you know, I was getting streams like up to 40 people were showing up, and that was like blowing my mind. Then the night after that, 60. Then the night after that, 75. And tonight, we hit 110 people by the end of a three hour stream. 110 people. I finally broke 100 people in a single stream. Like, I don't even know how to process this right now. I am so fucking, like, stoked and exhilarated. All I want to do is stream. Like, well, I, I also want to keep doing uploads and, and less talks and everything else. That's not what I'm trying to say, but like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I cannot believe that it's like after a year of just grinding and grinding and working and working and then grinding some more and getting basically nowhere. The channel's starting to take off. Like, people are showing up. Like, I had, like, a homie show up tonight and he was just, like, really feeling the stream. And uh, he, like, insisted on getting my an email. I gave him, uh, like, an email for the channel and he, like, wants to make, like, banners for me. He said he's really good at uh, Photoshop and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you know, like... People are getting into it, like the stuff that I've been dreaming about since I was 21 and this idea first popped into my head. It's happening, it's happening, and like, I don't know how to process it. I'm just so fucking stoked about it. I'm so stoked, and I just had to sit down and do another one of these because I just needed to talk to somebody. And like, I put it out on Snapchat, and good homies are, you know, hit me up and being like, oh my gosh, congratulations, you know, you're doing it, you're doing the thing, keep it up, and that's great, but I, I needed to, like, just express it verbally, and I've got a camera right here, so here we are, and oh my god, oh, oh my god, it's finally happening, it's finally fucking happening, I can't process where the channel is gonna be a year from now, I can't even process where it's gonna be tomorrow, because every time I start a stream, I'm like, nobody's going to show up to this one. Like, uh, that, that last time, that was just a fluke. But I don't think it's a fluke. Like, I think it's just actually fucking happening now. Like, everybody said, you know, you just, you have to keep grinding. And if you just keep grinding at YouTube, it will eventually pay off. Like, that's just how YouTube algorithms work. You just have to pay your dues. And I feel like I'm finally paying my dues. And maybe it won't be that long until we're at 10,000 subscribers and we're getting more subscribers every single stream every single stream two or three every single stream I think we're up to 47 I want to say and we were at when I started the first let's talk I think we were at 36 so that's like 11 new homies in the wolf pack that have come in like what's it been less than two weeks and and those numbers just keep growing exponentially and I'm so excited to just see where we're going to be next month and next year. Like, where are we going to be next year? Like, oh my God, I could be getting like a thousand views per stream, which is just terrifying to imagine streaming in front of that many people, to be honest. But um, I'm working on it. I'm processing that. So about the reading thing, um, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it didn't get a whole lot of attention that first video I posted with the reading the chapter thing. Um, not that that's a big deal, you know, I'm not expecting to just like have my channel explode because I'm reading a book on, on a camera. But I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep trying, I'm gonna keep going. I'd like to finish the book at least and see how it turns out. Whether or not I'm gonna continue doing that forever remains to be seen. You know, sometimes you gotta cut projects because they don't turn out the way you wanted them to. Sometimes you just gotta stick with them and grind. But at any rate, I feel like it's also kind of like working uh, a new muscle for me. Like, 
I'm getting pretty comfortable on camera, get pretty, get, getting pretty comfortable on stream, getting pretty comfortable in a lot of ways. But I found that like reading on camera was really challenging the, the last time I did this. And uh, I don't mind that, you know, the more challenges I can find and work on and overcome, the better, right? So uh, we're going to keep doing that in these. Uh, we're going to save that for the end. So if you're not into the reading thing, feel free to just stop at that point. I won't judge you. It's totally fine. And I would also love to get some feedback on the reading thing, you know, if you're enjoying it uh let me know if you're not if you're just like hey dude just just do a vlog without the reading thing like okay i'd like to know that too you know i'd like to know what you guys are feeling oh my god e3 is happening right now as we speak well not as we speak because it's night time and everybody there's probably in their hotels but it is going on this week's weekend slash week and we are finally going to find out whether or not we're getting bloodborne too as far as i know fromsoft hasn't done their panel yet but we're going to find out soon. Oh my god, like, if Bloodborne 2 is a thing, it's going to be... If it is or isn't a thing, it's, it's going to make a significant difference in my future, in the future of the channel, because I wanted Bloodborne as a game to be sort of the cornerstone of my channel. I want I want Bloodborne and Wolfgore to sort of be synonymous. So, oh my god, like, I am just sitting here with bated breath, like, can somebody please... Oh, I'm shaking the condenser mic. That's probably making bad noises. But I'm just sitting here like, fuck. Like, somebody just tell me, is it going to goddamn be a thing or not? Either way, we're still going to be playing the shit out of Bloodborne on the channel because I love it so much. But, oh, that has just been on my mind so much for so long. And I need to know. And I need to know now. <laughs> and on a weird kind of sad note that, like, I really, really, really don't know how to process right now. Like... I've made this kind of new friend lately. Well, he's, he's more my roommate's friend. Like, they've been chilling a lot lately. They've been going to the gym together. He's been over at my place all the time. Um, I don't want to use his name in this because there's, like, a lot of legal shit going on right now. But he just got arrested for murder. I know. Like, I, I, like this guy that I know, this young man who seemed like a really good kid, just got arrested for murder. And it's, it's fucking blowing my mind. Like, a couple of days ago, there was the field right next to my apartment. Right next to my apartment. He was my neighbor. I guess he was my neighbor. We were basically next-door neighbors. The field was all, like, roped off, cops everywhere, and we're just like, hey, what the fuck is going on? And there's this mugshot in, on the, uh, the... Placer County PD website, and yeah, so if you've gone through something like this, if you've known somebody closely, or, you know, maybe not as closely as, what am I trying to say? I, I don't know, I don't know, I just, I just need to, like, express that out loud, like, this guy that I know, I would call him a friend, killed somebody, and, and I, I just, I don't know how to process that. I, I don't know how to process killing somebody. I don't know how to process somebody that I care about killing somebody. And, uh, you know, based on what I've heard, it kind of sounds like uh, the guy did some really, really awful stuff. You know, for legal reasons, I'm not going to, like, talk about what happened in this video. But kind of sounds like he had it coming, based on what I've heard. Um, and I know that sounds terrible, but just... Trust me on that. Like, it sounds like he did something really, really terrible. Uh, but, yeah, I just, I, I don't know how to fucking process this right now. And it's just been eating me alive. So, if you've been through something like that, please talk to me about it in the comments below. And uh, maybe we can help each other figure out how the fuck to process something as insane as this happening. But on a lighter note, and back to the channel, because I don't want to jump into the reading after that. Um... One Quest at a Time, my Fallout 4 series that I've been working on since I got my fancy, fancy recording studio up and running, um, I have gone back and remastered it from the start because I really wanted it to be good, and I've put months and months of love into this series. Uh, so if you've noticed that I am re-releasing it on the channel and you're paying attention to the channel and you're like, what the fuck, what's going on, why are you, what's going on? Basically, I just wanted to go back and redo the first 20 episodes, which had already been released, and polish them up with the kind of editing that I've learned since I started that series, and make it better, because I really want that to be good. <laughs>
Um, yeah, I really just want that to be a good series because I put so much time into it already. So I'm going to be re-releasing that. Um, just to give you a, a frame of reference of what that's like behind the scenes, I am now on like episode 70 of that series because it's a huge, huge fucking game, Fallout 4. And I, yeah, yeah, I've just, I put too much love into it to, to let it do as poorly as it's doing. So I've gone back, totally remastered it. I'm really trying to like polish it up, polish up the thumbnails and just make it the best possible series I can be. So if you haven't checked that out yet, I think it's a good series. Um, I think Fallout 4 is a really compelling game, and I think the series has turned out well, but just nobody's watching it, which is fine. I mean, like, I'm, I'm doing well in other ways. Like, the stream is doing great. My, my From Software content is doing great. You know, Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne and whatnot. But I, I'd love for people to just check it out. And, you know, if you don't like it, please tell me, because, you know, I don't want to be covering Bethesda stuff putting months and months of work into stuff if, if people just don't want to watch it. And if you do like it, then fantastic. You know, let me know about that too. Um, but I think that's all I wanted to say about that, just to kind of give you guys a, a real frame of reference as to what's going on with that and what I'm actually working on in my recording and editing time aside from streaming. It's It's been one quest at a time for months and months. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm getting ready to move on to something else but I really wanted to polish that up and make it as good as it can possibly be. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. Alrighty, chaps. Well, I think that's everything I wanted to just chat about with you. So without any further ado, we're going to jump into a chapter of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, chapter two. And hopefully you guys enjoy this. And if you're not into the whole reading thing, totally cool. End the video now. Just fine. Uh, if you are into it, let's get into it. All right. So chapter two. The Vanishing Glass Nearly ten years had passed since the Dursleys had woken up to find their nephew on the front step, but Privet Drive had hardly changed at all. The sun rose on the same tidy front gardens and lit up the brass number four on the Dursleys' front door. It crept into their living room, which was almost exactly the same as it had been on the night when Mrs. Dursley had seen the fateful news report about the owls. Only... Only the photographs on the mantelpiece really showed how much time had passed. Ten years ago, there had been lots of pictures of what looked like a large pink beach ball wearing different colored bonnets. But Dudley Dursley was no longer a baby, and now the photographs showed a large blonde boy riding his first bicycle on a carousel at the fair, playing a computer game with his father, being hugged and kissed by his mother, being hugged and kissed by his mother. The room held no sign at all that another boy lived in the house, too. Yet Harry Potter was still there, asleep at the moment, but not for long. His aunt Petunia was awake, and it was her shrill voice that made the first noise of the day. Get up! Get up! Now! Harry woke up with a start. His aunt rapped on the door again. Up! she screeched. Harry heard her walk away toward the kitchen, and then the sound of the frying pan being put on the stove. He rolled onto his back and tried to remember the dream he had been having. It had been a good one. There had been, be there had been a flying motorcycle in it. He had a funny feeling he'd had the same dream before. His aunt was back outside the door. Are you up yet, she demanded. Nearly, said Harry. Well, get a move on. I want you to look after the bacon. And don't you dare let it burn. I want everything perfect on Dudley's birthday. Harry groaned. What did you say? His aunt snapped through the door. Nothing, nothing. Dudley's birthday. How could he have forgotten? Harry got slowly out of bed and started looking for socks. He found a pair under his bed and after pulling a spider off of them, put them on. Harry was used to spiders because the cupboard under the stairs was full of them. And that was where he slept. Oh my God. Oh my God. So I was at work the other day in drive through right? And we're just chilling, you know, same old shit. And this huge, oh, oh, gnarly effing spider comes crawling out like the thing was like the size of a silver dollar and it was like fat and angry looking you know like it was one of those like meaty beefy spiders that looks like a pit bull of a spider and it's just like mm, you want to go bitch and we were just like oh my god and we're like yelling in drive through because i guess we're little sissies about spiders i mean uh, i'll be honest i don't fucking like them like i i'll, I'll put a cup over them I'll, I'll get the piece of paper i take it outside you know, like, I can handle it, but I don't like it. I don't fucking want that thing on me. That thing was big. It was big. And, like, I've seen plenty of spiders in my life, and this thing was big. And, oh, my God. <sighs> Just had to share that with you guys because I'm still a little scarred about seeing that and knowing that that thing was, like, living in the store. 
and that, like, I could have, like, reached under there for, like, some receipt paper, and that little fucker was like, mm, what are you doing in my home? <laughs> like, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. I fucking hate spiders. Mm. Oh, my God. I was so fucking triggered when I watched the replay of the last video. There was, like, hella water in my mustache the whole time. It was driving me crazy. So let me just make sure this shit's on point. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I need to get better lighting in here, too. I understand studio lighting now. Well, I don't understand it. I understand the importance of studio lighting because they kind of look like shit. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's something for the future. All right, back to the book. When he was dressed, he went down the hall into the kitchen. The table was almost hidden beneath all of Dudley's birthday presents. It looked as though Dudley had gotten the new computer he wanted. God, I want a new computer. I'm sorry, Boo. I love you. You're a great computer, but I, I need a streaming PC. Not to mention the second television and the racing bike. Exactly why Dudley wanted a racing bike was a mystery to Harry, as Dudley was very fat and hated exercise. Unless, of course, it involved punching somebody. Dudley's favorite punching bag was Harry, but he couldn't often catch him. Harry didn't look it, but he was very fast. Perhaps it had something to do with living in a dark cupboard, but Harry had always been small and skinny for his age. He looked even smaller and skinnier than he had, than, than he, hmm, even smaller and skinnier than he really was because all he had to wear were old clothes of Dudley's, and Dudley was about four times bigger than he was. Harry had a thin face, knobbly knees, black hair, and bright green eyes. He wore ground glasses held together with a lot of scotch tape because of all the times Dudley had punched him on the nose. The only thing Harry liked about his own appearance was a very thin scar on his forehead that was shaped like a bolt of lightning. He had, he had had it as long as he could remember, and the first question he could ever remember asking his Aunt Petunia was how he had gotten it. In the car crash, when your parents died, she had said, and don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. That was the first rule for a quiet life with the Dursleys. Uncle Vernon entered the kitchen as Harry was turning over the bacon. Comb your hair, he barked, by way of a morning greeting. About once a week, Uncle Vernon looked over the top of his newspaper and shouted that Harry needed a haircut. Harry must have had, must have had more haircuts than the rest of the boys in his class put together. But it made no difference. His hair simply grew that way, all over the place. Harry was frying eggs by the time Dudley arrived in the kitchen with his mother. Dudley looked a lot like Uncle Vernon. He had a large pink face, not much neck, small, watery blue eyes, and thick blonde hair that lay smoothly on his thick, fat head. Aunt Petunia often, did, often said that Dudley looked like a baby angel. Harry often said that Dudley looked like a pig in a wig. Harry put the plate of eggs and bacon on the table, which was difficult, as there, was, as there wasn't much room. Dudley, meanwhile, was counting his presents. His face fell. Thirty-six, he said, looking up at his mother and father. That's two less than last year. Darling, you haven't counted Auntie Marge's presents. See? It's here under the big one for Mommy and Daddy. All right, thirty-seven, said Dudley, going red in his face. Harry, who could see a huge Dudley tantrum coming on, began wolfing down his bacon as fast as possible, in case Dudley turned the table over. Aunt Petunia obviously sensed danger, too, because she said quickly, and we'll buy you another two presents while we're out today. How's that, Popkin? Two more presents. Is that all right? Dudley thought for a moment. It looked like hard work. Finally, he said slowly, so I'll have thirty, thirty, thirty-nine, sweetum, said Aunt Petunia. Oh, said Dudley heavily and grabbed the nearest parcel. All right, then. Uncle Vernon chuckled. What a little shit. I fucking hate Dudley. I fucking hate Dudley. He gets me so triggered. I get hella triggered by Dudley. Little Tyke wants his money's, money's worth just like his father. boy, Dudley. He ruffled Dudley's hair. At that moment, the telephone rang, and Aunt Petunia went to answer it while Harry and Uncle Vernon watched Dudley unwrap the racing bike, a video camera, a remote control airplane, 16 new computer games, and a VCR. He was ripping the paper off a gold wristwatch when Aunt Petunia came back from the telephone looking both angry and worried. Bad news, Vernon, she said. Mrs. Figg's broken her leg. She can't take him. She jerked her head in Harry's direction. Dudley's mouth fell open in horror, but Harry's heart gave a leap. Every year on Dudley's birthday, his parents took him and a friend up out for the day to adventure parks, hamburger restaurants, or the movies. Every year, Harry was left behind with Mrs. Figg, a mad old lady who lived two streets away. Harry hated it there, 
The whole house smelled of cabbage, and Mrs. Fig made him look at photographs of all the cats she'd ever owned. Now what? said Aunt Petunia, looking furiously at Harry as though he'd planned this. Harry knew he ought to feel sorry that Mrs. Fig had broken her leg, but it wasn't easy when he rem reminded himself it would be a whole year before he had to look at Tibbles, Snowy, Mrs. Mr. Paws, and Tuffy again. We could phone Marge, Uncle Vernon suggested. Don't be silly, Vernon. She hates the boy. The Dursleys often spoke about Harry like this, as though he wasn't there, or rather, as though he was something very nasty that couldn't understand them like a slug. What about what's-her-name, your friend Yvonne? On vacation in Morocco, snapped Aunt Petunia. You could just leave me here, Harry put in, hopefully. He'd be able to watch whatever he wanted on television for a change and maybe even have a go on Dudley's computer. Aunt Petunia looked as though she just swallowed a lemon. And come back and find the house in ruins, she snarled. I won't blow up the house, said Harry, but they weren't listening. I suppose we could take him to the zoo, said Aunt Petunia slowly, and leave him in the car. That car's new. He's not sitting in it alone. Dudley began to cry loudly. In fact, it wasn't really crying. It had been years since he'd really cried. But he knew that if he screwed up his face and wailed, his mother would give him anything he wanted. Dinky Duddy Dums, don't cry. Mommy won't let him spoil your special day, she cried, flinging her arms around him. I don't want him to come, Dudley yelled between huge pretend sobs. He always spoils everything. He shot Harry a nasty grin through the gap in his mother's arms. Just then, the doorbell rang. Oh, good lord, they're here, said Aunt Petunia frantically. And a moment later, Dudley's best friend, Pierce Polkis, walked in with his mother. Pierce was a scrawny boy with a face like a rat. He was usually the one who held people's arms behind their back while Dudley hit them. Dudley stopped pretending to cry at once. Half an hour later, Harry, who couldn't believe his luck, was sitting in the back of the Dursley's car with Pierce and Dudley on the way to the zoo. For the first time in his life, his aunt and uncle hadn't been able to think of anything else to do with him. But before they'd left, Uncle Vernon had taken Harry aside. I'm warning you, he said, putting his large purple face right up close to Harry's. I'm warning you now, boy. Any funny business, anything at all, and you'll be in that cupboard from now until Christmas. I'm not going to do anything, said Harry, honestly. But Uncle Vernon didn't believe him. No one ever did. The problem was strange things often happened around Harry, and it was just no good telling the Dursleys he didn't make them happen. Once Aunt Petunia, tired of Harry coming back from the barber, looking as though he hadn't been at all, had taken a pair of kitchen scissors and cut his hair so short he was almost bald except for his bangs, which she left, to hide that horrible scar. Dudley had laughed himself silly at Harry, who spent a sleepless night imagining school the next day, where he was already laughed at for his baggy clothes and taped glasses. Next morning, however, he had gotten up to find his hair exactly as it had been before Aunt Petunia had sheared it off. He had been given a week in his cupboard for this, even though he had tried to explain that he couldn't explain how it had grown back so quickly. Another time, Aunt Petunia had been trying to force him into a revolting old sweater of Dudley's, brown with orange puffball. Z. The harder she tried to pull it over his head, the smaller it seemed to become, until finally it might have fit a, fitted a hand puppet, but certainly wouldn't fit Harry. Aunt Petunia had decided it must have shrunk in the wash, and to his great relief, Harry wasn't punished. On the other hand, he'd gotten into a terrible trouble for being found on the roof of the school kitchens. Dudley's gang had been chasing him as usual, when as much to Harry's surprise as anyone else's, there he was sitting on the chimney. The Dursleys had received a very angry letter from Harry's headmistress telling them Harry had been climbing school buildings. But all he tried to do, as he shouted at Uncle Vernon through the locked door of his cupboard, was jump behind the big trash cans outside the kitchen doors. Harry supposed that the wind must have caught him in mid-jump. But today, nothing was going to go wrong. It was even worth being with Dudley and Pierce to be spending the day somewhere that wasn't school, his cupboard, or Mrs. Fig's cabbage-smelling living room. While he drove, Uncle Vernon complained to Aunt Petunia. He liked to complain about things. People at work, Harry, the council, Harry, the bank, and Harry were just a few of his favorite subjects. This morning, it was motorcycles. Roaring along like maniacs, the young hoodlums, he said as a motorcycle overtook them. I had a dream about a motorcycle, said Harry, remembering suddenly. It was flying. Uncle Vernon nearly crashed into the car in front. He turned right around in his seat and yelled at Harry, his face like a gigantic beat with a mustache. <laughs> Motorcycles don't fly! 
Dudley and Pierce sniggered. <laughs> what a douche. Fucking Uncle Vernon. I know they don't, said Harry. It was only a dream, but he wished he hadn't said anything. If there was one thing the Dursleys hated even more than his asking questions, it was his it was his talking about anything acting in a way it shouldn't, no matter if it was in a dream or even a cartoon. They seemed to think he might get dangerous ideas. It was a very sunny Saturday, and the zoo was crowded with families. The Dursleys bought Dudley and Pierce large chocolate ice creams at the entrance, and then, because the smiling lady in the van had asked Harry what he wanted before they could hurry him away, they bought him a cheap lemon ice pop. It wasn't bad either, Harry thought, licking it as they watched a gorilla scratching his head, who looked remarkably like Dudley, except that it wasn't blonde. Harry had the best morning he'd had in a long time. He was careful to walk a little way apart from the Dursleys so that Dudley and Pierce, who were starting to get bored with the animals by lunchtime, wouldn't fall back on their favorite hobby of hitting him. They ate in the zoo restaurant, and when Dudley had a tantrum because the Knickerbocker Glory didn't have enough ice cream on top, Uncle Vernon bought him another one, and Harry was allowed to finish the first. Ugh. Mustache hair in my mouth. Harry felt afterward that he should have known it was all too good to last. After lunch, they went to the reptile house. It was cool and dark in there, with lit windows all along the walls. Behind the glass, all sorts of lizards and snakes were crawling and slithering over bits of wood and stone. Dudley and Pierce wanted to see huge poisonous cobras and thick man-crushing pythons. Dudley quickly found the largest snake in the place. It could have wrapped itself, wrapped its body twice around Uncle Vernon's car and crushed it into a trash can but at the moment it didn't look in the mood. In fact, it was fast asleep. Dudley stood with his nose pressed against the glass, staring at the glistening brown coils. Make it move, he whined at his father. Uncle Vernon tapped on the glass, but the snake didn't budge. Do it again, Dudley ordered. Uncle Vernon wrapped the glass smartly with his knuckles, but the snake just snoozed on. This is boring, Dudley moaned. He shuffled away. Harry moved in front of the tank and looked intently at the snake. He wouldn't have been surprised if it had died of boredom itself. No company except stupid people drumming their fingers on the glass trying to disturb it all day long. It was worse than having a cupboard as a bedroom, where the only visitor was Aunt Petunia hammering on the door to wake you up. At least he got to visit the rest of the house. The snake suddenly opened its beady eyes. Slowly, very slowly, it raised its head until its eyes were on a level with Harry's. It winked. Harry stared. Then he looked quickly around to see if anyone was watching. They weren't. He looked back at the snake and winked too. The snake just jerked its head towards Uncle Vernon and Dudley, then raised its eyes to the ceiling. It gave Harry a look that said quite plainly, I get that all the time. I know, Harry murmured through the glass, though he wasn't sure the snake could hear him. It must be really annoying. The snake nodded vigorously. Where do you come from anyway, Harry said. The snake jabbed its tail at a little sign next to the glass. Harry peered at it. Boa Constrictor Brazil. Was it nice there? The boa constrictor jabbed its tail at the sign again, and Harry read on. This specimen was bred in the zoo. Oh, I see. So you've never been to Brazil. As the snake shook its head, a deafening shout behind Harry made both of them jump. Dudley, Mr. Dursley, come and look at this snake. You won't believe what it's doing. Dudley came waddling toward them as fast as he could. Out of the way, you, he said, punching Harry in the ribs. Caught by surprise, Harry fell hard on the concrete floor. What came next happened so fast, no one saw how it happened. One second, Pierce and Dudley were leaning right up close to the glass. The next, they had leapt back with howls of horror. Harry sat up and gasped. The glass front of the boa constrictor's tank had vanished. The great snake was uncoiling itself rapidly, slithering out onto the floor. People thought the reptile house... People throughout the reptile house screamed and started running for the exit. As the snake slid swiftly past him... Harry could have sworn a low hissing voice said, Brazil, here I come. Thanks, amigo. The keeper of the reptile house was in shock. But the glass, he kept saying, where did the glass go? The zoo director himself made Aunt Petunia a cup of strong sweet tea while he apologized over and over again. Pierce and Dudley could only gibber. As far as Harry had seen, the snake hadn't done anything except snap playfully at their heels as it passed. But by the time they were all back in Uncle Vernon's car, Dudley was telling them how it had nearly bitten off his leg, while Pierce was swearing it had tried to squeeze him to death. But worst of all, for Harry at least, was Pierce calmly, calming down enough to say, Harry was talking to it, weren't you, Harry?
Uncle Vernon waited until Pierce was safely out of the house before starting on Harry. He was so angry he could hardly speak. He managed to say, Go! Cupboard! Stay! No meals! Before he collapsed into a chair, and Aunt Petunia had, Aunt Petunia had to run and get him a large brandy. Harry lay in his dark cupboard much later, wishing he had a watch. He didn't know what time it was, and he couldn't be sure the Dursleys were asleep yet. Until they were, he couldn't risk sneaking to the kitchen for some food. He'd lived with the Dursleys almost ten years, ten miserable years, as long as he could remember, ever since he'd been a baby and his parents had died in that car crash. He couldn't remember being in the car when his parents had died. Sometimes, when he strained his memory during long hours in the cupboard, he came up with a strange vision, a blind, a blinding flash of green light and, and a burning pain on his forehead. This, he supposed, was the crash though he couldn't imagine where all the green light came from. He couldn't remember his parents at all. His aunt and uncle never spoke about them, and of course he was forbidden to ask questions. There were no photographs of them, of them in the house. When he had been younger, Harry had dreamed and dreamed of some unknown relation coming to take him away, but it had never happened. The Dursleys were his only family, yet sometimes he thought, or maybe hoped, that strangers in the streets seemed to know him. Very strange strangers they were, too. A tiny man in a violet top hat had bowed to him once while out shopping with Aunt Petunia and Dudley. After asking Harry furiously if he knew the man, Aunt Petunia had rushed them out of the shop without buying anything. A wild-looking old woman dressed all in green had waved merrily at him once on a bus. A bald man in a very large purple coat had actually shaken his hand in the street the other day and then walked away without a word. The weirdest thing about all these people was the way they seemed to vanish the second Harry tried to get a closer look. At school, Harry had had no one. Everyone knew that Dudley's gang hated that odd Harry Potter in his baggy old clothes and broken glasses, and nobody liked to disagree with Dudley's gang. That's chapter two. Cheers. <clears throat> well, that was fun. Uh, feels good to be reading. It really does. It's relaxing. It's a good way to unwind after the stream. And I just get to chat with you chaps. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Oh, hopefully you're enjoying the idea of what we're doing. And, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to call this one for today. Um, if you like the video, hit that like button for me. Uh, leave a comment. It really does help the channel grow, and I'd love to just hear from you guys. I asked a number of questions throughout the video. Feel free to respond to any of them or none of them. That's totally fine, too. And if you'd like to see more of what I do here, more of this charming face and mustache, hit that subscribe button for me. I appreciate it. All right, peace out, guys.